Coming up next on Access Framingham TV, Madagascar, with my guest, Amy Dane. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to Travels with Jack. I'm your host, Jack Barron. Each month, we bring you a guest with an exciting travel experience to share. It might be a vacation in California, a cruise on the Amazon River, a trek in the Himalayan mountains, or a business trip to Las Vegas. Where have you gone? If you'd like to be a guest on our show and share with us a recent trip, a vacation, a cruise, maybe a day trip right here in New England, we would love to have you as our guest. Tell us about the transportation, the hotels, the shopping, the good food you enjoyed, the people that you met, anything you'd like to share with your friends and our viewing audience. Just contact us here at Access Framingham Television and let us know you'd like to be a guest. You can phone AFTV at 508-875-5434 or you can send us an email message to info at accessfram.tv. Our associate producer will contact you to make arrangements for you to be our show guest here on Access Framingham TV. Today, frequent traveler Amy Dane returns to Travels with Jack. In November 2011, Amy visited the world's fourth largest island, Madagascar, which is 250 miles off the coast of East Africa. Amy has joined us to share that visit with you. Welcome, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> nice Glad to, to have here. you. Nice to see you. Uh, a little history on Amy. Amy Dane is from Longmeadow and is currently lecturing about her passion to travel. She has been to over 90 countries. I'm jealous. She is also uh, currently doing a travel photography show and exhibit throughout the state of Massachusetts, and she's exhibiting at hospitals, libraries, and galleries. Um, her website is www.amydaneadventures.com. It lists many of the services she offers as a, uh, I'm going to say, travel connoisseur. It talks about her exhibits and other relevant information. Amy is married and is the mother of two children. And she's no got No pets. What? No, no pets? pets. <laughs> I'm not going to tell my dog Cole. And uh, she's going to share with us today her trip to Madagascar, where I have always wanted to go and have never been. So there's always go time. ahead, make me envious. <laughs> tell me how wonderful it was, and let's hear about okay. it. Okay. Um, it was great. Um, I went in November of 2011, right before, and if I can just ask for the next slide, you'll see why I was so excited to go. Um, this, is ah. what, this is what my street looked like the day before I left. Okay. Uh, you all remember that lovely ice storm we had, and in Western Mass, we really suffered. We really suffered. In fact, I lost 20 trees on our property. Oh, alone. my God, really? So I went outside with my camera, and this was the day before I left. So the idea of getting into, oh, and we had already lost heat for three days. No heat. Uh, and, of course, uh, we just froze. And um, the idea of getting into a car and driving to Logan Airport in a warm, heated car was very, very exciting to me. <laughs> and I had no idea. We had no communication. With all those broken trees, you didn't cut a few and put them in the fireplace? We don't, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be smart? Uh, we... I had no idea, of course, in Boston how things were going because we had no communication. I didn't even know that the flight would go or not. I was just happy to get in the car and go. And sure enough, the flight did go. So that was very, very good. 
Let me interrupt you. What airline did you take? Okay, this is interesting. Now, I took Air France through Paris. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I got to Paris in the morning. That's six and a half hours, as you know, to yep. get to Paris. And I was supposed to connect with another Air France flight within the couple hours to continue to Madagascar. Well, wouldn't you know that with the change of season, Air France changed their schedule. Without and when telling I, you. Of course, when I went to check in for the flight, there was no such flight. Well, that's just very nice, isn't it? So they booked me on a Madagascar Airlines flight that night, which meant I had to sit around Charles de Gaulle all day. When I tell you all day, I mean 12 hours worth of a day. Okay. I finally walked myself Don't into, you love into the, the Hilton. airlines just cancel. On I you. went into the Hilton at the airport like I owned the place and sat in the lobby and they left me alone. Okay. Uh, you couldn't use the facilities. When it when it came time that I had to use the facilities, I had to leave, but they would let me sit there and nap sitting up. You can't lean over, but if you nap sitting up. So it actually took me uh, 17 and a half hours of actual flight time, but this went over the course of two days and two nights. So I finally arrived in the capital city on Tuesday morning or Thursday morning, November 3rd, that much later, and was picked up at, at 7.30 in the morning. Very, very bleary-eyed, I have okay. to say. <laughs> uh, and I would like to show you what Ma where Madagascar is, for starters. We can, yep, oh. see, there we have it, that little Thank thing. Thank you, Bill, that that's a great nice, map. Okay. Nice little uh, <laughs> island there is actually the fourth largest in the world after Greenland, Papua New Guinea, and Borneo. And okay. as you told us, Jack, you were right exactly. It's 250 miles off the coast of East Africa in the Indian Ocean. It's well below the equator, very tropical, nice little place. And next, please, we go to two maps side by side. And on the left, you'll see the star. That's where the capital is, Antananarivo. And they call that Tana for short. Tana. Okay. And okay. what language is that if you... Is that Madagascar? I would say it must be Malagasy. Malagasy oh, is their is the language. language. Okay. Uh, there's also plenty of English and French, but there we are, and we went down. Now, if you look at the right now, map. Now, you say we. Did you go with friends? I went with a group. I had one friend I travel with a lot. She's from Glasgow. When Who we meet you up. had? Did she go we with booked you to it together. Antarctica? No. Was she no. The, no. No. Okay. No. No. But she has gone with me quite a lot, and uh, we meet up wherever. Yep. And this was a group of British people. And you see our itinerary on the right map. And we, of course, land in the capital city. And you see, I'll go sort of from top to bottom. Andasa Bay there is where we saw quite a lot of lemurs. We'll be talking about that. Now, if you look down the right side of this map, you will see a mountain range, the, that dark area. Okay. And this is a, a, li a limestone escarpment that traps in moisture so well. So that's where you get a lot of the tropical rainforests here. Okay. Yet, once you go left, you see the Izalo National Park there, it turns into sandstone and you have real desert conditions. And they even have a canyon they call the Grand Canyon of Madagascar. Oh. So, in um, other words, even though you may not be that far away, it changes dramatically. Dramatically. The landscape can change incredibly. And you'll see some slides later on in the show that will give you a feel for all of these conditions. Now, they don't have volcanic activity or anything, but there's actually a gorgeous lake that you'll see that was made out of an ancient volcano. Oh, okay. So, there's, there's all kinds of things to see. Um, I'd like to tell you that it, it's one of the poorest countries. Oh, really? It's one of the 50 that. poorest countries in the world. And they actually. I have to interrupt you. Um, other than travels with Jack, I'm in the food business. <laughs> and we buy vanilla beans mm -hmm. from Madagascar. And they get very high prices. So. There must be a few rich farmers there. So, If there are, Jack, they're in the north. Okay. And that is exactly <laughs> where we did not go. We were offered at one point some vanilla to buy. Okay. But you see, since I've given up my baking, I have no need. Okay. <laughs> I no longer want to cook you've, and bake. I don't want to do anything. Cooking? That's okay. it. I'm through. I'm really, really done. <laughs> But you're right. Why is it I meet all these women, they get over a certain age. We've they, done it. We've they, been there they and done that. They don't want to cook anymore. Right. They don't want to That's clean. right. Yeah. Oh, but the men it. can still go to work. 
Okay, oh, absolutely. go to work. Please, please. That, <laughs> okay. that, that suits us perfectly well. All right. <laughs> Uh, but it is a poor country. I'm going to get letters now. All right. letters. Although I must say nobody was starving. All right. um, they have a life expectancy of about 60 years, so that's oh. not so bad. And they actually have the lowest HIV AIDS rate in Africa, so that's kind of nice. So they do consider themselves Africa. Uh, are the, are the people yeah. who keep track of They're that really stuff? not. They're, They're really, really not. not. Actually, and they don't really look African either. They have really? their own look, and you'll see that when you see some okay. of the slides. Okay. Um, but that's true. No, they really don't. Um, and they were what? A French colony originally? Or I, I will a let you know influence. about that. Originally, they started relations with Great Britain. Oh. And then in somewhere in the 19th century, Britain decided to forget it and go pursue their interests in Zanzibar instead. So then the French came in. And oh. they, the, yes. Interesting. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, and still to this day, more French is spoken than English. And it's great fun to get to go practice your French when you go over there. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of nice. So anyhow, I was telling you that I got there at 7.30 in the morning, totally bleary-eyed uh, after two nights on a plane. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see a beautiful... Oh, oh, we missed one. Who okay. is this? Actually, Chief this Ramo is where... I thought, I thought I had shown you the... the um, building, a beautiful building, and this is where you learn about the early history of Madagascar. So yes, this is the first, what they call marina chief. They, they were marina kingdoms, okay, okay, marina tribes. And this guy, um, he unified these kingdoms okay, and started the relations with Great Britain, and he had 12 wives, okay, all of whom had their own palace. Oh, really? Yes, he was smart. And we're going to... And, but I, none of them cooked or they no, cooked? I don't know what they did. But anyhow, you, I want you to remember him That's because... That's what I want these museums to, to let us know. Did the wives cook? You're going to see his palace in a minute, so remember him. Okay. Um, and now we go to the next king who took over, Radama the I. This is his son, or...? That, I believe, was his son. Oh, that one, let me That's think. That's all right, I won't Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. He's the one that started the relations with Britain. The other one was earlier. But he died young. He died at age 36. Okay. And he, his widow... They don't widow, look African. They look, uh, no, he looks more no, Malay. Malay. Right. They do look more Malay. Yeah. He, his wife then took over when he died. Okay. So here's what she looks like. She was the terror queen of all time. Okay. She ruled by sadism, torture, brutality, and believe it or not, in the 33 years of her reign, she decimated 25% of her people. Okay. She was an isolationist. She declared Christianity illegal. She wanted nothing to do with Europeans. However, she did have a fancy for one European French architect she was having an affair with who built her a lovely palace that we will also see. Okay. Now, this was her successor, her son, and he got rid of his mother's evil ways, reinstated freedom of religion, Christianity was okay again, and things went on like that. And in 1896... But he only ruled, what, two years? Is that uh, correct? Not very long, yes. Okay. Not very long. Um, in 1868, Madagascar became a French colony. Okay. Okay. And uh, Madagascar did not really get independence until 1960. Now, this is the palace I told you about, the palace of the first king. Okay. On the left, you see this, this doorway with this huge, big, round rock. Yep. And that's the sort of the cover for the door. So before you would enter the area at, at night, or they would close it by rolling that rock over and open it up again in the morning. Oh, I see. So that's they rolled what, it. Yeah, I don't know how they could have managed that thing. I don't either, but okay. And on the right, you see how you go up toward the complex here. And the king had a nice little palace, teeny tiny, not what we think of as a palace. Next. And he... Um, was always watching his back, you know, because the tribes would squabble. So he would sleep up high on a bunk bed. We couldn't take pictures in there. It was pretty dark in there. But all over the walls were his cooking pots, his things. So somebody cooked. Uh, his weapons in the middle of the room was a fireplace. And there was a chest of his linen. So he, that's how he lived. 
So you'd say even though royalty, he lived re relatively simply. simply. Now, yeah. this is his bath. He only had a bath once a year to celebrate the new year. So okay. as we understood it, he would bathe with all 12 wives. He would sleep with the wives and bathe with them and celebrate the new year. So that's okay. the once a year bath. Well, that was, you know, what we call a hot tub. A hot tub, indeed. That's what it was. Okay. And then if we continue, we go and we see... Next, uh, the Queen's Palace, oh, the okay. evil, evil Queen's Palace, which is much fancier and later. It would date much later. Now, she was so paranoid that someone would poison her that she had a dining room full of mirrors so she could watch people move and watch them serve. And were you able to tour her palace? Yeah, we could go inside. Oh, okay. and, and it was really quite elegant, small but elegant. So this was kind of fun. Next. And oh, the tomb. So this is the first king's tomb. Now he's buried underneath the stone part, okay? Yep. But the house part is sort of keeps the spirit. It's like a spirit house. Now in Madagascar, they really value their ancestors. They're very important to them. And uh, they do, they honor, everybody honors people with a very special ceremony they have called the turning of the bone ceremony. Okay. And this can be done in groups of people or singly, but after you've been buried for about five to seven years, you are exhumed. Okay. And they will take the bones and they'll wash them and lovingly wrap them in a clean shroud and bury you again and they'll feast and celebrate and you're good to go for another five to seven years when they is do it again. Is this a Buddhist thing? Did no. they tell you what religion? No. no. Most of this country, about half, is Christian. Oh, really? Okay. But ha the other half is mostly animist, so that's where this would come. And then there are a few Muslims, but not many to speak of. Okay, but because see, I was going to say China, I remember them telling us they move bones. Bones around. Of, of um, Well, and again, family. ancestor worship. Yeah, I mean, ancestor, it, it, exactly. It's like that. In this country, very much ancestor Ancestor worship. are important. And you will see that kind of tomb all around the side of the road. And it's also a culture with a lot of taboos. So you can't point at a tomb or you'll get a curse. If you point, you have to point with a bent finger. Okay. So we're full of taboos here. So you have to be careful. All right. Ah, the zebu. Now this is a very strange looking cow called a zebu. I'd never heard of a zebu before. And to the kings and to everybody else, even today, this animal is very important. So when we go back to the palace, we see where the king kept his zebu. Next. So this is a... It's a special animal. A special animal. A special animal. Are they only found in Madagascar, to your knowledge? I never heard of them anywhere okay. else. Okay. It looks a little bit like a water buffalo. It does. It does. But what I wanted to show you when we continue is where the king kept his zebu. He corralled them. Okay. And there was a mound where he would sacrifice them. Okay. And oh, then, they did sacrifice them. Oh, yes. The, okay. Oh, yes. And, of course, status is where you took the horns and you put them on the tree. So this is the, the pen where he would keep the zebu. Okay. And then the next slide will show you where he sacrificed them. Yep. And the next will show you the tree where all of these skulls are. Oh. Made. Because this is a status thing. The more zebu you have, the more wealth you have. It's big on status. Zebu are very, very, very important in this culture. Now, let me ask you something. This, of course, goes back many years. Many years. Today, today absolutely. even today, zebu. Even today, really? Even today. The zebu is like gold. It's like money in the bank. It's like hard currency. So this is their version of the new, uh, what do they call them, bitcoins? To this you day. You know, the uh, new currency mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. So this is their version. To this day, when you die, yeah. your, you, your zebu are slaughtered and the skulls are put on your tomb. And this shows your position in society. Your wealth, so your status every single in the zebu I own is dead. That's what they tell us. Okay. Uh, so zebu are very important. If there's a drought, <laughs> yeah, and the the zebus don't get a good price, that's a disaster. If there's not a big enough crop because of no not enough water, it's a disaster. But your zebus are important to work as well. And here you see them clumping up the rice paddies. Everything is manual. Manual. Really? The yeah. You're not going to see a piece of machinery. Is, really? Oh, no. Did You're going to see did a, a hand tire? you? That really kind of did. I've and seen stuff it, like this around the world. What did they say to you? Did they give you a reason that when you asked the guide, 
which I'm assuming you had. We didn't ask. They just didn't have machinery. Uh, there's, huh. there's no infrastructure in this place. But this just shows you the importance of the Zebu in many aspects of their life. You know, being what I would assume is a relatively pristine island. You say no machinery, so they probably don't have a lot of... Um, Very basic. But I'm saying a, a lot of bad air or carbons and, you know, things like that. Well, they're now no, showing in but China... they burn. They, burn. they do burn. But in China, they're showing the rice is now, they're saying, is accumulating lead. Ugh. Yeah. So it could be a country like Madagascar who does grow rice would be a very valuable uh, be. rice producer because of the fact that I now think there would be a lot less yes. solution. A yeah. lot less. Oh, it, well, it looks. In fact, as, as Asia becomes more and more industrial, this is a problem all over Asia, not just China. Yeah. For sure. So a place like Madagascar could be ideal for, uh, could be. for producing, you know, the rice. Could be. But if we go back to food, for us, yeah. I have to tell you, the Zebu made a great meal. Oh, you ate Zebu? Oh, we did. A lot. It was quite good. But see, Zebu here, now you see them, do you see that little boat in the distance? Yes. We were all going to get on that boat with luggage to go stay on a beach resort for a few days at the end of the trip. And we had the Zebu take us out there to the boat with our luggage in these carts. And our guide was sort of arguing a little bit with the Zebu keepers here, the cart men, uh, because apparently they haven't been treating the animals that well. They kind of treat them as workers, and they, uh, he, our guide told them that they had to really be good to their animals if I they wanted to tour guide. business. Because you know, yep. we're all good. very eco-friendly. So there you go, see some of us trotting off in these Zebu carts. So, oh, so the Zebu is really? They're uh, everywhere. They're everything. Quite and, popular. Um, yes. Huh, interesting. Uh, this, we're back to the food. If you see how scrawny and miserable this little chicken looks. Oh, is that one? I wasn't it's sure. It's a little chicken, and it's my example of showing you how absolutely scrawny the chickens and look. And what has so, he got on his, his I don't his know leg. what he's dragging around, but when I took all a look at these chickens, I did not touch chicken on this trip. I felt so sorry for these chickens. So the zebu I ate, and I have to do say it was quite good. And in fact, in general... The food is very good in Madagascar. Oh, really? Yes, it really was. French and influence, you'd say, on the oh, food? Yes. Oh, yes. First of all, when it good. comes to French influence, yeah. and we have to give them this. Um, if we can go back to that picture, it's just great. Here you see the woman carrying the fish on her head, yep. and go fishing, and the women come, and they bring it here, and they'll bring it to the shopkeeper or the restaurant owner and sell the fish. So you know you're getting fresh stuff. But, yes, you're right, um, Jack, that the French... Wherever they go, wherever they colonize, the food is right. you but you can get the best bread. And when Everything. you're on it, yeah, when you are driving 1,250 kilometers in two weeks and have a lot of sandwich stops on the side of the road, it's you know really is great to have good bread. It is. Yeah. No, the French go to Hanoi and food. you'll get the best croissant. Really? In Paris, yes. The French have have done that contribution very very nicely. <laughs> But as you can imagine, the fruits and vegetables in this country That'd are be beautiful. Great. Yep. Um, although the pineapple and the the papaya were not so good, the mango oh, okay. was better. Lots of bananas, but for some reason, some of the fruits weren't so hot. But uh, it was a wonderful place to eat. Yeah, no. That's always important to me. Now, and this, this is Tana. shows you we call Tana, the capital city, and it just shows you how interesting. There are a series of hills here, and the houses are just built up how right up people, the hillside. How many people, any idea what the Don't pop? know, but this okay. would be big. This would okay. be big. But notice that they're farming rice right below the I city. I see it. Yeah. It, it. Everything is just next to nothing, or next to farming and, and, and um, civilization, so to speak, go together. They're together. It's an interesting little town. This is looking down oh, from the hill. Oh, this looks pretty big. Yeah, yeah. so you see okay. a big stadium there, the big yep. sports stadium. And beyond that is a man-made lake called Lake Annecy. And the next slide will show you how beautiful it is oh, this time of year. Oh, look at this. What are these purple Jacaranda trees? Jacaranda trees. And I've they're heard of, gorgeous. I've heard of Jacaranda. Yes. I saw them in Kenya many years ago. They're beautiful. So around this man-made lake, you see lots of activity. You see the barber shops here. They have these little barber huts, so you can stop in and get a haircut. Jacaranda. Jacaranda, Jacaranda trees. Wow. And the next slide will show you people working, people welding metal, making furniture. furniture. And the next one will show you, I love the old Citroen cars. Yeah. It's just fun. It's really, you can see from the street scene uh, how sort of funky this, this whole place is. Next. 
artistic, would you say? Did you see a lot of art galleries? No, 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 no. no, no. This is basic. This is basic. Now, well, no, but even so, you know, Cuba, I have never oh, been. But I, oh, I just came back. Oh, you went to Cuba. Scene, I just yes, went. don't they have a big art scene? Uh, oh, huge, huge. This, but that's a this whole show another. may not show right away. I don't know when Bill's going to put this show on. Are you doing something with Well, Cuba? no, I would love to, but so I know I. Uh, in the news we're following Jay-Z and Beyonce. Oh, yes. Just were, came back from Cuba for their fifth anniversary. And, right. Uh, well, there's be ways great. to go and ways not to go. Uh, Ma uh, Madagascar, which you'll buy more there, are wooden things. You know, things made Statues of Statues of So, things. yeah, yeah. It's not an artsy place no. at all. Okay. I'm but surprised. When we went to the slide we just left with, you saw some barbed wire there. Yes. And what this brings me back to telling you a little bit about what happened after Madagascar received independence from the French in 1960. There have been three republics. Okay. Now, it was sort of like Egyptian dynasties. Between each republic, there would be some strife. And people here love to riot and burn things. They're constantly burning things. Oh, okay. So between republics, they were burning things. And the last big issue was in 2009, at the end of the Third Republic, when they burned the National Radio Building. They burned lots of industries owned by the president. He had all kinds of industries. And between the burnings and all of these things and the fact that Madagascar has a cyclone every single year in January, February. Okay. There's all sorts of destruction and where there's destruction there's looting and so it's very common to see barbed wire and things on buildings. So security there, it, is an it's issue. It's an issue. In the capital city it is an issue. Well, I was telling you before we started the show, I'll let you get to this in a second. We, when uh, several years ago, when the vanilla beans were very high priced, the farmers were having issues growing them to maturity because robbers were coming into their farms, picking the beans, selling them on the black market, and they weren't getting to maturity. Which is so sad because. You know, that'd be like looting elephants for ivory. Well, to, to, I know, to, but, you know, uh, very short sighted. Listen, you and I both know the world is not always uh, no, ideal. No. Um, All right, this is nothing works, buildings not used. So this is the, what? The theme of the trip, the theme of our whole trip, was that in this country, nothing works. Okay. And I want to sort of uh, say one funny thing was, you know, right in the capital city there was a huge, brand new, huge building that turns out to be the American Embassy. This not, is not, that, this, no, no, not, not this, no, not this. this. Okay. Next to a rice field. We weren't allowed to take pictures of the American Embassy. And it's been empty basically since 2000, uh, 2009, since the strike. In other words, nothing works. This was the president's palace. Oh. It lies empty. Next. Okay. So the new president has not moved in. I don't know if they don't have a new republic oh. yet. Last I heard, they were supposed to have elections this summer. I don't really know what the most okay. recent is. Right. Now, we just saw a building there Anna. that is a hotel in Andasabe right by the train station that used to be full of people coming for lunch on their train rides. Okay. But, of course, the train was uh, blown out in the 1994 cyclone, so this doesn't work. So no train? No, no train. And then we went to Ansarabi, another it's town. It's a good-looking building. A nice looking train station, but yep. the trains don't go there either. They don't work. Okay. <laughs> and we also passed throughout all of our driving. So all these, uh, there's no train in the whole island? Or little bits of didn't train? Didn't see one that works. Didn't see one that no, worked. Okay. Nothing works. Uh, I actually bought some CDs because I like the music to use sometimes in my slideshows, and even those wouldn't work. Half the songs would play, half the songs wouldn't play. Tell me a little bit about the hotels. Where did you stay for this trip? Uh, depends where you are. Uh, we had some pretty decent ones. Um, pretty funky, though, because you know how you have your converters for the plug? Yes, yep. And uh, we were usually using the two-pronged one, but some hotels had different plugs. It was like they weren't even on the same electrical oh, so it's system not consistent. or something. Nothing was consistent. Okay. If we were in the rainforest, say, it would be more of a lodge. Some were actually quite nice. Some were very basic. Who selected all the hotels and such for Oh, you? this was done with the trip that I took. It's a, a, Briti a Br British trip. A, so, British and trip. they do this on a regular basis, yes. this trip? Okay. Yes. yes. So they had tested out all the hotels before you got there? This is a fairly budget experience. But I mean, so we, even so, yes. the people oh, yes. who ran it oh, yes. knew what kind of place. In fact, when you get a really nice place, which did happen a couple times, you're almost shocked. Because, you know, we go expecting the worst. Okay. And it's always good for a laugh, you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> well, you have to have a sense of humor on something. Back to nothing works. This just gives you an example of the kind of roads that they have in this country, meaning non-existent. Very few are paved. And even the economic structure infrastructure here is very poor. Very few places will use a credit card. Very, really? very, very few. You need to go with money. A couple of hotels or restaurants in the capital city will take a card, but they're not set up for credit cards. Really? Yeah, it's, it's pretty backward. Huh. Uh, what was working? The factory that worked was the Three Horses Beer Factory. That seems to be working very well. And and they have a cigarette factory that seems to work very well. So I do want you to so know that... So the vices were selling. Indeed, something does work. Okay. Yeah, something works. And um, this is, most people don't have electricity or water in their home, running water. So you'll see these jerry cans, people lugging jerry cans all over the place. And they so go you would the, say it was very uh, third world. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see these little water huts where they pay a little bit of money to get water, and then they lug it home. Oh, okay. and, and at one point, I was in a taxi, and there was this long line stringing around the building. And I said, well, what are they waiting for? And he said, they're waiting to pay their electric bills. Although that didn't make much sense, seeing there isn't much electricity. I said, well, why don't they just mail them in? Who wants to stand around all day? Well, the mail only comes once a month. Okay. So you get the idea? I get the, you get the idea. idea. Now, the schools, they don't have enough school buildings, so the kids have to rotate between going in morning or afternoon. They'll do like a double shift. Um, there's a very, uh, schools are free and compulsory, but you still have to buy your own uniform and you have to pay for books. So this deters a lot of people. And the adult literacy rate is not good. It's about 64%. It's okay. not great. And for girls, it's much worse. Oh, really? The girls are not uh, it, well, you know, equally? Uh, no. Well, no, but I mean, I think... No, I think the girls could, could do a little better here. Okay. Yeah. I do. No, some countries that may right. be third world, the women do very, you know, well and I educated. wasn't getting that sense You didn't get here. that. Okay. I didn't get that sense. All right. And now what I'm going to show you is, is sort of the kind of thing you would see by the road as you drove by. And uh, lots of brick making. You see a lot of brick piles okay. everywhere. Yep. They use bricks to build. And the next slide will show you some of the, the little structures, you know, the thatched roof bricks. Okay. And they're cute. All around the countryside, everywhere you'll see this kind of, of housing. And then... Most of these people in the countryside, you would say, were farmers? Oh, yeah. Okay. Subsistence farming, absolutely. Yep. And everywhere you go, well, whether, it be, nice. yeah, whether it be nowhere or somewhere, there are always churches. In fact, sometimes you find them in, in the middle of no place, but they, they really believe and they do have their churches. Oh, all yep. right. Well, that's good. Yep. So you see that. And the next you'll see the kids are all out. Sometimes they're oh, out at school exercising. The they're adorable. They play. I mean, the kids are wonderful and they're friendly and sweet. So that's always nice to see kids. And this is what you'll see along all the streets as you drive along a road. Um, everything happens on the street, kind of just like it does in Asia. They eat on the street, they work on the street, they sell on the street. One thing not so pleasant was all this meat hanging all over the street. I love the strings of sausages there, or whatever okay, it is, God yeah. knows. In fact, uh, when I see all that meat hanging, it amazes me that we did eat the zebu, but um, that you'll see that. And, of course, the good old-fashioned way to do laundry. Oh, this is the laundry. That's the laundry. This is the laundromat. You don't need quarters here. Okay. And, so you, and, and people carrying things on their heads, which is a whole big subject I hope to talk to you about. Um, but this is a very common thing. In this culture, more men would carry than in some other cultures on their head. Usually it's the women. Okay. But the men were even seen carrying their children, which I thought was Isn't sweet. that interesting that you would notice those things? Uh, yes. I'm noticing who carries what. Are you yeah. doing that in your photo I'm displays? I'm doing that. I'd be turning into a sociological study because in, in many places in the world, you don't see men carrying much, let alone children. Men are very good at supervising. They will stand there Management. and direct okay. the women on how to carry and where to bring it. Mm. But they don't do the, a lot of the carrying. No. Not a lot. Okay. Uh, growing rice. Now, rice is a big staple here. They okay. eat rice three times a day, all the meals. Um, it, in fact, uh, so what I was uh, going to show here was the fact that in September... By the way, I have to compliment you. I love the pictures you did. This uh, one is pretty. No, now, no, they're very clear. Oh, and you, good. You did Thank a great you. job, yeah. Well, in September is when they start to till the fields. Okay. Uh, and they flood them like this. 
And then what they do is they bring back those zebu to start breaking up the clumps of dirt, and they will run these zebu around in circles. It's hysterical. This guy is sort of, you know, um, shepherding. Chasing these them, guys. yeah. Yeah, and they run in circles, and this is the, the way they break up the dirt, okay? It's that simple. And the women plant, and this is in November, so we were there for the planting. The men don't plant. No, the women are doing the planting, and the women also do the harvesting. So after cyclone season, the <laughs> women will do the harvesting. This is women's work. And the men, what, tell them where to put the harvest after they harvest it? Beats me. Really? You quit? <laughs> and, and, you know, nothing goes to waste here, so the husks will be used to thatch a roof or feed the zebu or something. Ah, now we're into a big problem. And everybody... But you didn't see the men doing a lot of work, it sounds like. <sighs> no. All right. All right. Uh, they farm a little. They yeah, but the, little... The, the women are doing the rice work anyway. Okay. I'll put, to put it to you there. All right. Um, we think of deforestation as something fairly modern. But actually, deforestation has been going on for the 2,000 years since people started in inhabiting Madagascar. 2,000 years. And... Since man first came there, they have lost 90% of their forest. Really? 90%. Now, on the left there, you see a beautiful, pristine forest. Yep. And on the right, you really see the, the mess of deforestation. And this is actually one view that I had in the two different Now, slides. when you say deforestation, are you saying they cut down the yes. logs and yes. they, what, use it for yes. farming? Yes, they cut down because they want the land to farm. And um, this is slash and burn technique is terrible. It's, it, they grow rice, manioc. They, they want to slash and burn for quick results to get the land. And it works to make a better crop for the first few years, yeah, but, but then, then it just ruins the land. Now, the French even would come in. Who's this little fellow? Oh, well, why one goes to Madagascar okay. is lemurs. Now, lemurs, there are 99 species and subspecies of lemurs. And believe it or not, it, only in Madagascar are they found in the wild. Oh, really? Okay. Madagascars are primates. You see his little five-digit hand? Yes. That's a yes. primate. They have nails like we do. They don't have claws. You know, the forward-facing eyes with depth perception, the little muzzle, they are primates. And uh, there are many kinds. And most lemurs are what they call typical lemurs, and I'm showing you some of those. Now, I just love this and guy. And they're what? They're vegetarians? Now, this one is not. Uh, oh, back really? up, please, because uh, I want to talk a little bit about the ring-tailed lemur, which is my favorite. They're found in the south. They are very social. They travel, say, in groups of 30. Okay. They are omnivorous. They are actually the most terrestrial, as opposed to arboreal. And they uh, mark their scent, you know, they mark their territories okay. with scent. Uh, I love this one. This is the black and white rough lemur. Really cute. And this, I mean, some of these came out great. The brown lemur. And there are many different kinds what of brown lemur. What are they lemurs. kind of in the um, something between a monkey and a ferret or the, something? The Am I giving typical a... lemurs do look monkey-like with yeah. the tail, the big ears. Yeah. Yeah. This is the common, the typical lemurs do look this way. You get a whole lemur lesson over here, like more than you want to Well, know. it sounds like Black this is what lemur. unique to Madagascar. Oh, and they're, they're just so adorable. There's so many kinds. And this one shouldn't be here because it's not a typical lemur. This is what you call a shafaka. It's a different one. We'll look at that in a minute. Now, and he's this what, guy, red, and, red and white a little bit. He was bit. A, a red and brown, oh, and some of them are, one, oh, yeah. we're back to the brown Now, I'm going to ask you a question nobody's asked you, I bet. Do any of the people take these as pets? No. No, no. okay. Oh, no. These are, these are wild animals. Okay. Uh, well, because they look the, so cute. This one, here's the rough one, all I know. That's why you gotta love him. But the best one, Jack, you gotta see the next slide. You gotta see it. This guy was rubbing his little back out of branch, <laughs> reaching out, stretching. He stood there and laughed for 20 minutes. It was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. And the little Hubbard Sportif lemur look at his little head peeking out of a tree. Oh. Terrific. Isn't he cute? He and, is cute. Oh, this is me with one right on me. Now, this was like the Disneyland of, uh, of of lemur because you went to a little island where they're so habituated that they're almost like tame. And if you have a banana, they'll come right up to you. And we got our best pictures there. We absolutely got our best pictures there. Oh, 
And look at there's somebody uh, oh, stroking him. Oh, so they look him. pretty little. Oh, they're yeah, they're not so big. They're they're you know. Yeah, I was gonna know. say well the other no, photos, but so I can huge. see with your so hand huge. there or yeah, someone's that's hand. Yeah, somebody's hand. No, and but it's so cute how they are. And this, some of them are nocturnal. Actually, half the species of lemurs are nocturnal. Okay. And especially the small ones. And this little tiny mouse lemur is, is probably the smallest now, primate. Let me ask you, is there a, uh, a protection status? Oh, yeah. In the, oh, they do. The state, oh, yeah. the state yeah. says you can't. Yeah. They're, oh, good. They've made more and more national parks good. to preserve these guys. Good. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I... I you're not aware of it, but I'm a very much of an activist with animal protection, and uh, it's a big issue for me. And, well, it uh, should be. And this was a little uh, mouse lemur there who hung out in the massage hut of our beach place. So if you were on massaged on your back, you could look up and see him kind of looking at you. Ah, yeah. they are cute. cute. And here we have look the shafakas. Look at the colors. Yeah, the shafakas are bigger. They are bipedal, not quadrupeds like the other ones. So they are bipedal and they leap from side to meaning side. Meaning they have what, two arms, you're well, saying? Well, bipedal meaning they really move on two legs, not four. Okay. You know, they, they're, so they stand up. They, yeah. We would and be bipedal. Leap. Correct. Okay. But we don't leap the way they leap. And they're the second Speak for biggest. yourself. Ah, <laughs> the Indri Indri is actually the biggest lemur. And there is a park called Montadia National Park that was started in 1970 just to preserve these guys. Really? They have a very certain kind of diet. They eat lots of young leaves and, and fruit, and they eat like a, a kilo of 10 different species of plants. Who did you get the sense was behind pushing for the preservation? Oh, definitely the government. But you, with so many different governments and so much yeah, poverty, I, do, you, do you find the NGOs or the other? Yep, they're in there, too. Okay, so too. you're saying perhaps some of the other countries, European countries, they, America, are pushing? I would think so. Okay. And, and, you know, they're trying to reach out to the farmers that live right nearby to not slash and burn and to protect. Right. And they're having trouble uh, getting the population um, in line. This guy is actually one of the newer species, and he's very, very rare, hard to find. Now, Jack, sometimes you're hiking to find this stuff. Yep. You're in the rainforest. You could hike hours and hours. And not see them. And, but the terrain can be really tricky. This was our hardest hike. It was now, steep. I see you slippery. say bamboo, meaning he eats bamboo. I don't no. know about that. That's Did what they Did you see named. them growing a lot of bamboo? Was that a... There is bamboo. There is, there bamboo. is bamboo. Okay. Uh, but, uh, oh, the baobabs. Oh, look at these now, trees. What are you know, these? Baobabs. Now, baobabs. look at my friend Mike, if you can see him. Okay, uh, I do. He is six foot five, and his no the tree is thousands of years old. It is so high you can't even see it. And baobabs have funny roots. Their, their branches are almost as if you pulled a tree out of the ground and put it upside down. Okay. They're sort of flat-like. And these ones, the biggest ones can have a circumference of 64 feet around. No. And they've lasted So these are their version of the redwoods. Yeah. They're fireproof. Really? And they don't make good timber because... They're very pulpy and mushy inside. So oh, people so they don't bend, have, you say. So nobody will destroy this tree because they have no purpose. If okay. the purpose people will have is maybe to make a hole in it and create get well water and use it that way. Okay. And these are the little mini bob mini baobabs. Oh these Yeah, they're the same baobab, but these are minis and they don't laugh. They these are about a hundred years old. Really? They grow fatter, they don't grow taller, they grow fatter. And uh, we're looking at more flora and fauna now. And Those I'm, were 100 years old. Yeah. Okay. Now, this, this particular plant is called Napoleon's Hat. You can see why. Okay. And then we have Jesus' Crown of Thorns. You okay. can see why. And believe it or not, that is actually not a leaf, but it's a gecko that looks like a leaf, that brown thing there. Where? A leaf. <laughs> yeah, exactly where. It's, it's an animal. The brown gecko, thing. That brown thing is not a leaf. Isn't the gecko what we see in that insurance commercial? This is another commercial? kind. No? Okay. A, a, a different kind. And this is a stick insect on oh, the yes, bottom. Oh, yes, I've seen those like before. A and, the, you know, that's just amazing camouflage. Yep. Amazing. These are called the white leaf bugs because they're young, they're white, and then when they get older, they turn into red leaf bugs. Okay. Okay? And then we have the... Long-necked giraffe weasel, which is male, and then we have 
the short necked giraffe weasel, which is female. So I got to really. Keep that. This is what they told you. Yeah. These pictures are great. Oh, yeah. And now, now, what did you do? You knew what you were looking for, and you. No, no, they showed us. They things. showed and you, the, okay. Oh, the chameleons! Everybody loves chameleons, and they okay. can be anywhere from an inch long to feet long, and they have eyes that are weird. They're eyes. He are almost so has a toad. Toad. Yes. Yeah, they all look. There are many different kinds, but they have very interesting eyes that have. Uh, vision separately, and they can see 360 around their body, which is great for spotting. What prey. about birds? Did you see a lot of we different? We saw birds. You're going to see some birds when we run some pictures. Okay. Although I'm not a great bird taker because I don't have the patience to, to deal with them, but you will see some birds. They have many, many birds. Okay. People, very friendly, a little okay. reserved, but they are very friendly. And um, now, oh, I'm show, well, now I'm showing you that the chicken again. I want to show you things that made me laugh. And this guy comes up to us and he's trying to sell us his chickens. He We're looks at a like gas little station. Richard. He reminds me of little Richard. We're at a gas station getting gas in a town, and he comes up to us to sell us chickens. <laughs> and this is called a tourist tree because it's peeling. We thought that was kind of fun. And another thing that made me laugh is that, that you have to go halfway around it. the world, halfway around the world to find someone wearing a Cape Cod sweatshirt, and not just Cape Cod, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Did you see that? And to find out who is really the boss. Have you ever wondered in your life who's really the boss? Very cute. Now you know. <laughs> and now I'd like to to just show you some other I pictures. I love the Cape Cod shirt. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to just run through some other pictures from this trip so you get a sense of the I will uh, let them run it, but I have to tell you a funny story. Um, I'll never forget, we're somewhere, I think it was in Italy, and they're selling tables. They go, where are you from? And I said, you know, Boston. And uh, he said, no, no, we were in Boston at the time I had lived in Newton. I said, uh, Newton, you wouldn't know. He said, no, tell me, Newton. And he said, oh, I sold the table to Mrs. Brown from <laughs> Newton Center. And blah, 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 you know, so it makes me laugh when I see that Cape Cod That's funny. shirt. You know, yep. Here you yep. are in the middle it's of the jungle. A, it's a small it's world. It's a small world. Obviously, someone came and gave, <laughs> gave the kid a shirt. And then they'll tell you they know our associate producer Shirley, they met her down there and <laughs> so, Oh, this is the the Hindus, oh, oh, Hindu or Buddhist monks. Got. Now uh, Jack, I am working on a show yeah. called People Carrying Things Across Cultures. Because okay. as I told you before, I'm fascinated by people carrying Well, the things. first thing is they don't have shoes. And they don't have <laughs> shoes. And what I've done, because of the layout of this particular gallery, is I've broken it down into themes. And this would be an example of people carrying for religious purposes. Okay. They're alms bull. You know, think you. about it. Everybody carries, young and old. We carry for love, we carry for necessity, we carry for leisure. Here's another religious one. We have the Virgin of Guadalupe. And this is a big, big church back there. This is a there. very big basilica. This looks like outside a beautiful, of, can I tell you something? Outside of Mexico City. Oh, this is yes. in Mexico. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, yeah, I, 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 oh, no, we're all over the world now. We're all okay. over the world. This, I'm just showing you what I'm working on right now. This is my beautiful daughter holding presents because what we celebrate, how we express ourselves, quote, religiously for Christmas or Hanukkah is to give gifts. So people she's carry. She's carrying gifts. She's carrying gifts, you. yes. This is the Holy Festival in Calcutta, India, the Color Festival. And he's carrying his drum, and this is a religious festival to celebrate the harvest. They throw paints and colors all over the place, and it's absolutely wild. Here, here is, again in India, what I call blessings to go. He has his little basket, and he will um, bless you for a few rupees. He will put a dot on your head, a good luck flower in your pocket, tie a little string around your wrist that you should leave there until it falls off. That's, and he'll, a, that's a business for you, Amy. I'm telling blessings you. Blessings to go, you, I call you, it. I'll get you a spot streets. in downtown Springfield. Yeah. Here we are in Paro, Bhutan. And this is a festival Where celebrating. Where is Paro, Bhutan? Bhutan is, oh, I want to say, northeast of India. And they have a big festival um, that that celebrates the Buddha or the, it's a big thing. But anyway, they're carrying this big uh, demon guy. Here we're back in Mexico for the Day of the Dead, which takes place November 1st and 2nd. And they sell and buy flowers. Chrysanthemums are big this time. And okay. they, build, they build altars. They decorate their graves. They stay all night in the cemetery. 
celebrating. Really? Yeah, they celebrate. This is in Ethiopia, the Timcot Festival Look at the view. In Wait, I have to tell you, the colors are Aren't they stunning? fabulous. They are now parading the Ark of the Covenant down to the baths of the Queen of Sheba. It's like a baptism. What do you mean the Ark of the Covenant? Are you saying from the Israeli Bible? That supposedly is in... And are Ethiopia. these supposed Ethiopian Jews? These are Ethiopian priests. Priests who are I, 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 not I, Jews. Uh, we're but, back to carrying. So now right. we have Grandma carrying her little uh, grandchildren while she works. See, look at how people carry. And of course people have to carry while they work. Here are people looking for someone to carry. This we is, are in the rice this, fields of southern China now. Okay. And we see a little girl carrying her sister, and we think, oh, play. But this isn't play. She's taking care of this child probably while her mother works. Again, now we're back in the colors. Indian towns in Mexico, and this woman has a little baby on her back while she's going to market. This is America, good old America, the Santa Pub Crawl weekend in December in New York City. And another way people carry people. People carry other people. These are great. This, this is woman, where? Look this at her. This is in Sikkim, which is a part of India in the north. With the East. nose ring. Look at the nose it? ring in there. And this is what I classify as people carrying for work. Uh, I mean, she's just buried. I have to tell you, though, after looking at these pictures, I feel we dress very drab here in the United States. Uh, don't we, though? Really? This, this no, look at is, all the colors, yeah, this everybody This is again else. in Pascaro for the Day of the Dead Festival in Mexico, the flowers again. Yep. And this is what I call the oh my God section of the exhibit. How can you carry this much stuff? We are now in Papua New Guinea on an island, uh, Kirawina Island, same island. And, I mean, it amazes me. The That's where we get the Tahitian vanilla beans from, by ah, the way. That, okay. They grow a different style of bean. Yep. It's a different flower, yep. more floral okay. than the Madagascan, which is a bourbon vanilla. Again, Just we're so carrying you know. for work here in, in northern India, I think. No, that's going to be Uganda? Africa. Uganda? Maybe it's Uganda. I Uganda. Get, I got to look that He up. looks Uganda. Yeah, he probably does. No, not in India. Now, this oh, one I color. love. Okay, this is again Coretaro, which is a state outside to the west of Mexico City. And I actually made a birthday card out of this. And it says inside, you open the card and it says, it's your birthday, have some balloons. And my mother just turned 78 and I sent it to her and she called me and said there weren't enough balloons for 78, <laughs> which I tend to doubt. Does she cook? She does. She oh, cooks. She, she cooks. cooks. Good. Now, this is, again, we're in Mexico, and this is people carrying for work. She's trying to sell all this stuff, so the colors are just dazzling, and her little head pops out of all now, this stuff. Now, here you've got a guy finally. We are in eastern Turkey, and he's, celebrating, oh, okay. and he's selling his pretzels. Oh, I remember those in Turkey. They we weren't Turkey. pretzels. They were bread. A and sesame a, bread. Yeah. Oh, and, they're delicious. And now we are in Morocco, where yep. it just was this winter, and I don't know how he's balancing all these pita breads. I have no idea. And they don't like this their This is pictures. where, in Marrakesh Morocco, or Casablanca? Somewhere on the road to somewhere. Okay. Okay, and I don't know where. But, um, oh, now we're on the beach in Myanmar, and I call it fast food for lunch. She's got fish skewered on the beach. And we're back in Papua New Guinea, and he's carrying his uh, taro plants. And, oh, this is great. Oh. They caught a bandicoot, this rodent, in, in Papua New Guinea. What and are they, they going to do with them? I, uh, that's what we asked, and the answer was they were going to cook it in soup for dinner and make bandicoot okay, soup. Okay, I'll so pass. We, that's, we were so <laughs> glad we weren't asked to join them that night. <laughs> and here we're carrying food. We're carrying fish for dinner. That's another section of my exhibit, carrying food. He's on the side this of the road. Looks, he almost looks yeah. Middle Eastern, this No, this fellow. is Papua New Guinea. Oh, this okay. is lemons and oranges. And my banana girl, I okay. love, from Uganda. She was a, I love her. And she's at a bakery. She's going to make uh, banana bread. Oh, gosh. And he's carrying sticks. I don't, you got to wonder, is he carrying or is the bicycle carrying? But okay. The bicycle's he's carrying. carrying. Sticks. Well, I put him in anyway. All right. She's carrying her broom. This is a uh, uh, Madagascar. Madagascar. This is in Myanmar. Have you ever seen such a thing? No. This, uh, these go in the, oh my God. And he's uh, Uganda. He's carrying blankets for colors. sale. Yep. But look at the neat, neat pile on his head. Isn't it marvelous? You know, you'll have to come back so because the more, I'd love to see. You see, you're giving my audience and me. The supervision. The men load the heavy rock on the woman's head. This is a construction site. And oh, she's I see. dressed in this elegant looking sari, and the men tell her where to go and dump it, and then she comes back, and the man puts another rock on her head for her to drag it somewhere else. 
carry well, it for it work. Well, it builds a strong neck. Strong neck. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I have to tell. Well, go ahead. And but, do you love it? This but is gonna, I've got to get my two cents in. I'm going to have to bring you back because you're giving me a, a taste of I want to see Burma. Well, oh, Myanmar yeah. and I... Yeah. I want to see all these places. I know it. But this is in Jaipur going to market. And, you know, isn't it wonderful how women can socialize and chit chat while they're carrying all this stuff? I don't even see this woman on the Well, I remember in Jaipur, I've been got. to Jaipur. Crazy, and I remember huh? the women were making patties with everything to they how, do their cooking and burning. I won't get into it today. And we're in China here. Yep. Yep. Carrying for work. And again with the sticks, uh, that one I think is not going in my exhibit. Okay. You're gonna take I chose the other one, I think. Oh, uh, the other photo yeah, of him. Yeah, the other guy with the sticks. I had so much material. You know. But you see, you start to notice you, when you, you take you, pictures. You, you, you give me a taste of all these other trips. We're, we're going to have to get you back shortly. You start noticing things cross-culture, and then you want to pursue them. So tell me a little bit briefly, where is this exhibit on carrying right now? It's not. It's going up in Northampton okay. at the library, Forbes Library in Northampton for the month of July. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. I hope the newspaper will cover it for you because it's really uh, an unusual way to uh, it's present been a, it's an exhibit. It's been a really interesting thing to work on. Oh, I love it. I really do. And I'm, you know, if I didn't love it, I'd say it's nice. You know, I, I uh, toned down. I'm fascinated with No, the it is. It's interesting. What you didn't see are people carrying for leisure because in so many parts of the world, they just don't have leisure. So that's something I want to develop. And I'll probably have to do more picture Leisure, taking you'll here. Come, you'll come to America and you'll show That's people. That's right. That was the people carrying people with the Santa Claus. We do. Clauses. I think you're right. I think Americans, we have more leisure more than leisure. many other societies. Western cultures, yeah. Yes. You'll come back and see I us again. I hope so, Jack. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was great. Thank you. Really. And I'm. Uh, we got to get you back for more of these because uh, I just want to see them. Yeah, even we'll even if I... For the audience, I don't care. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna visit these other places. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm.